Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. Um, as ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll endeavour to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. Um, it's just me this week, because Alex is on holiday. Anyway, he, he should be back next week. Um, so without further ado, this week's first question uh, comes from 2112BigD who says Magic Eraser does a fantastic job of brightening up white shoes. Not sure how they're branded outside the US, but in the US they're branded under Mr. Clean. Um, not a question, more of a statement, but I wanted to include it because we were talking about shoe cleaning last week. And yes, Magic Erasers really work really, really well, especially on uh, fabric shoes like the, the DMTs that you often see us wearing, that are the knitted construction. Um, and there's some interesting chemistry going on. So they contain a, a compound called melanine and um, that acts as sort of a atomic uh, molecular sandpaper, um, which is quite cool and interesting for nerds like me. But yeah, uh, it's a good tip. If you do want to clean those shoes, Magic Eraser, uh, you can pick them up in loads of places. They're really useful. Um, also, if your kids have put crayons all over the walls, they're good for that as well. Uh, Shomibrat is next, saying, hello guys, love the channel. Um, have a question for the speed gurus. In a couple of months time, I'm gonna participate in a time trial race. It's 180 kilometers long. That's really long. Which tire would you suggest best works in terms of speed? 25 millimeter, 28, or even wider? Uh, right now I ride on uh, NV SES 5.6 rim brake wheels and Conti Grand Sport Race 23mm tyres and they feel really good. A few punctures but I see people use much wider tyres these days, even 30mm ones. Thanks in advance. Right, so this is a, a great question um, and a lot of it, it there, there is no one size fits all but there is a correct answer I would say for every specific situation. Now in your case here 180 kilometers is long and so there is an increased risk of getting a puncture. That can also be elevated by the surface that you're riding on. So if there's crap roads there's a much greater chance of a puncture. If you're riding on really nice smooth roads where you don't often get punctures then I would say puncture protection is less important. The weather plays an impact. Is it going to be wet? In which case, puncture protection becomes more important. You know, those sorts of things you want to factor in. So look at the weather forecast. Um, in terms of the width, it depends on the age of your wheels. So older Envy wheels are going to be more optimised for 25mm tyre aerodynamically. Also on the road, I would go for 25 in a time trial situation, but it's speed dependent. If you're going to be averaging a speed roughly sort of 30 kilometers an hour or less, 28 millimeter tires are going to be the better option. If your speed is going to be above that, you're probably better off going 25, 26. Um, that was through work that was done by Swiss side several years ago. They sort of worked, that was the sort of cutoff. Um, so factor that in. The other thing is, is the current tires you're using that the Grand Sport race, I mean, they're not, they're not a fast tire. Like the tire tech is, they were a good tire in the day, but tire tech has moved on phenomenally. So you've got a significant watt saving to be had there. Also by switching to latex tubes, as, as we point out, there's also a saving from TPU tubes as well. So that would be something I would consider. Um, in terms of puncture protection, if you go for an out and out time trial tire, you've got a lot less puncture protection. If it were me, I would probably go for something like a fast performance tire, like something like the, you know, a, a Pirelli P0 SL or, a, you know, a GP5000, something like that, but not all the Vittoria Corsa Pro, you know, those sort of tires. Um, it's a fast rolling tire. It's got a bit more puncture protection than an out and out TT tire. That would probably what I would go for and 25 mil. Right, Dan Tuber is next saying, is there a way to test the calibration of a torque wrench? How long do they usual, usually last? Um, the best way to calibrate a torque wrench is to go to your, probably to your local bike shop or go to someone you know who's got a, another torque wrench and just compare your torque wrench versus their torque wrench. It's probably the easiest way to do it. There are ways you can also do it that are a bit more convoluted where you start actually hanging weights off torque wrenches. So for example, um, 
if you understand moments is what you need to look into. So one Newton meter is if you have a, a stick that is a meter long, if your torque wrench was a meter long, if you hung one kilogram off the end of it, that is what one Newton meter is. So you, you can start measuring the length of your torque wrench and then applying weights and hanging them off the end of it to actually measure and calibrate your torque wrench if you really want to go down that route. But like I said, the easier way is probably just to compare it to a, a, a new one or a, a really high quality one. As to how long they last, how long's a piece of string? But top tip, just do the thing that John Canning has always advocated, which is never leave your torque wrench torqued. Always turn it off to like the no torque setting uh, when you leave it so that it's not under tension. Um, and then that, in theory, would probably help it last longer. Uh, NK Grigo says, with waxing chains getting ever more popular, when will we see manufacturers su supplying us chains without all the packaging grease uh, so that we don't have to go through the rigmarole of degreasing, cleaning it in the first place? It's a good question. Um, I would, for one, would like to see that happen, although you'd probably want to start packing the chains in some kind of inert gas or inert atmosphere so that there's no moisture in there that can allow it to go rusty in transit or when it's on the shelf of a bike shop. Um, because, well, you know, a lot of these chains are produced in very humid climates in Southeast Asia, um, so rust is a problem. The packing grease probably serves a purpose of actually preventing the rust. And with the new chain stripper uh, formulation that you can get from Silka, that is so effective at just stripping off that, that layer of factory grease. It does really make things really easy and quick to do. So um, yeah, check that out. But um, yeah, who knows? I would welcome it though, if they did come without the, without the factory grease on. Yeah, why not? Especially it's, yeah, we'd make life easier, wouldn't it? Next question is from too old for this, 67, who says, hi tech gurus, one for uh, O'Connor. I'm not sure who O'Connor is, um, but getting into bike packing and bike touring, is a power meter sensible to keep track of all the vital stat stuff? If so, single dual, dual crank pedal based, what's the best one to get? Uh, congrats, thanks for the, the laughs and um, cheers. Right. Um, so a power meter is absolutely not essential for getting into bikepacking. Like if you're getting into sort of racing and you want to measure your effort and you're really getting into the nitty gritty of training, yeah, power meters, really useful tools, but really not essential for bikepacking if you just want to go out and enjoy and explore and look at the scenery and take it in and stop whenever you want. And for me, that's kind of what bikepacking is all about. Um, so as someone who has power meters and uses them all the time, if I was going bike packing, I probably wouldn't be bothered about having a power meter on my bike. And I, if I did, I probably wouldn't be looking at it too much. Um, that said, you know, if you are wanting to race and focus on the performance side of cycling more and go bike packing, as some people do, yep, yeah, power meters are one of the best investments you can make to help improve your fitness and track it. I am always a fan of, uh, crank-based power meters and spindle-based power meters and those that offer like either well a dual-sided measurement or they offer um, their measuring at the crank so it's effectively dual-sided or the spider um, rather than single-sided but single-sided are often cheaper so you have to weigh that up but I would always go with a crank-based one because they tend to last longer than pedal-based ones which are quite vulnerable especially in a bike packing situation where you may be going off-road and banging the, the power meter pedals on rocks or, or whatnot. So um, yeah, I'd factor that in. Uh, the last question this week is from Clovercast4266, who says, hey fellas, regarding the UCI laws and regulations, aero socks have a maximum length up the leg. Does this mean that the UCI competitions don't allow tights? If they do, can you make them out of a more aero fabric pattern to essentially bypass that? Think of a skin suit with tights and sleeves all made of aero fabric sock texture. You're right. This is actually a UCI loophole. You, you could wear a full bodysuit thing that was aero with tights. Another way around it is to wear aero leg warmers. And I'm surprised that no one has actually done this yet. I understand that there are a couple of clothing brands who have experimented and made these things, but I've just, when I say no one's done it yet, no one's worn them in a race. Um, but yes, there is, a, there is a gain to be had there. The reason why we don't see them wearing it is because of, well, two big reasons. One is cooling, uh, as we know, super important, and the riders 
I guess, presume that they'll get too hot in a lot of situations. And the other is just the knee flexion, the knee mobility. By having tights on or leg warmers, you're kind of ever so slightly impeding that knee joint, which is obviously crucial to producing power. And so they like to have the knee free, so hence why they would use socks and long shorts. But yeah, it would be interesting to see, wouldn't it, if anyone actually does try and do that in a big time trial at like a pro race, because you're right, it is a, it is a loophole in the rules. Love a good loophole. Right, well, that's all we've got time for, unfortunately, this week. But keep your questions coming down below uh, using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them next week. Cheers. Bye.